Welcome back. As probably most of my viewers know, if I tear something down, it's old and faulty. This one is a little bit different. Um, I bought myself a cheap Chinese inverter drive. It's rated 3 kilowatts. That's what it says on the label. And uh, before we blow it up, I thought we'd take it apart. Have a look inside and try to get a clue what the real ratings are. Because I have my reservations. Uh, the thing is less than $150 delivered to my doorstep, which is a unbelievable price. It's, it's so cheap, it makes me wonder where they cut the corners. So let's take it apart and have a look inside. Uh, capacitors exposed. There are some terminals which may be live or not. We've got a little fan here. Um, it's small for the size. But All right. Some screws here. I never took one apart, so bear with me. We'll take a little bit. While I'm searching for the right tools here, I want to say thank you very much to all the new subscribers and the old subscribers for staying with me and watching. Um, when I started this, I didn't expect that it goes that far. So a big thank you to all of you. And uh, please stay tuned, there is more to come. Okay, we found a little screwdriver. Pretty sure this comes out somehow. Uh, it's just plugged in. Uh, they put some glue on that. Make sure it doesn't come out. So we'll take that away. Okay. And fairly in frame here. Okay, we got a main board. Um, it's actually nicely done. The the PC board itself is um, got some coating on it. All the connectors are sort of locked with some uh, heat glue. I particularly like to see is the rectifier ratings and the IGPT ratings because that will tell us if the thing is really good for three kilowatts or not. Okay, so here we got the electronics. It's got a few lights, got a few IOs. Looks like optos here. So it's 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 actually surprisingly well done. Okay, so this is a dead end. So how does that? Ah, there are some more screws here. I think it's there. there are some more here. Yeah, comes apart. All right. Okay, so this looks a bit Chinese. I'm not so super well organized mainboard. Um, two current transformers here. That's the power for the fan. Um, my first impression is actually not that bad. Problem is I can't see the IGPTs are down there 
and I need to figure out if that is no, it's just foil, so we can take it away. It's put together a bit loveless, but uh, yeah, let's see if we can get that out here. So the board is actually held with the top screws. All we need to do is getting rid of these screws here, and then we can lift off the bottom and the mains rectifier is here. It's got uh, varistas here, so we have some protection. Interestingly, the single phase ones, this one is sold as a single phase 230 or 220 volt input. It's still a three phase machine. So I wonder if the only difference is the nameplate, and this is a 400 volt inverter with 13 amps. We'll figure that out. So I'm just Briefly take all the screws out and I think it's worth it because it gives us a bit more peace in mind what the thing really might do or not do. Sorry, that's going to be boring. I'll just get those screws out. It certainly voids my warranty, but I can't be bothered really. Something is holding us up here. It should come off sort of. Okay, this is the, that's just a cooling fan, and here we have a voltage regulator or something like that, just get that little screw out here. With no insulation underneath, so here we come. These are the capacitors, which we can see from the outside world here. We check what the what the numbers are in a minute. Let's figure out what the IGPTs are. It's really hard to see. This FGA 25 N 120. We're gonna Google that and find out what it is. FGA 25. What did I say? N 120. We'll be back in a second. Well, I'm very surprised because it's actually a 1200 volt 25 amps IGBT. So the drive is rated for 13 amps. Uh, the 25 amps is at uh, 25 degrees continuous. Uh, no, sorry, at, a, at 100 degrees, uh, it's 25 amps at uh, 25 degrees is 60 amps and pulse is 90 amps. So this thing is, is pretty good for that machine. So nothing wrong with that. What I could not get to is actually the uh, rectifier. I need to figure out what that is. The only thing which looks a bit odd is actually this wire here. I think this is, is a ground wire. It, uh, looks really odd. This is just wedged underneath that one here. So <laughs> that's that's botched together definitely because if you look at this, they just lifted a PC board a little bit and just wedged that uh, ground wire underneath. Uh, this is a diode, I don't know what it's doing. I still try to get to the rectifier to see what the rectifier rating is. So, in a 400 volt drive, you would use the same IGBTs. So I think if there is any difference, it's just a rectifier and I, probably not even that. Uh, that means that thing would run on 400 volts as well, providing you can change the software, change the mains voltage to 400 volts. Uh, we'll see. So you could with the transistors. The rest of the design, it looks okay. It is. It's not too bad. It's just cheaply done. Um, yeah, loveless. But apart from that, looks good to me. The problem is the writing of the rectifiers on the top, and I can't get there. 
Well, let's just assume the rectifier is good for the current we're doing. Okay. So the next one is, it says output 3 kilowatt, 13 amps, 32 and 20 volt AC. Uh, it doesn't really tie up because 13 amps at 220 is just over 2.8 kilowatts. Um, and that implies a power factor of 1. So um, yeah, I would say this thing is probably 2.5 kilowatts with some allowance for overload maybe input it says uh, AC 220 two phase plus minus 20 percent at 50 Hertz plus minus 5 Hertz um, wonder why they specify the frequency because it would I'm pretty sure it would run easily on 60 Hertz as well probably even better let's check the capacitors and that's uh, hard to see. 560 microfarad, 400 volts. Let's see how they wire it. They look all in parallel. So this unit will not work on 400 volts three-phase because the capacitors are not rated for it. They are only 400 volts, which is okay it's uh, a at 230 volts our rectified dc is 320 something so that's okay we're safe with 400 volts but it will certainly not work on much higher voltages because i wonder what the brand is song kong okay something chinese at least 105 degrees which should be standard nowadays Okay, so let's say I've seen worse from European production. Would I change something? Probably not. It looks good. Again, bottom board is coated with some epoxy, maybe. Um, this looked a bit odd because that was just bend over here but apart from that that's the control transformer I think so this is all the that's the switching power supply for the low voltage end uh, okay let's put that back together and fire it up and see if it goes pop I'm not going to film that, it's just everything in reverse. All you need to look at is uh, that the insulation layer is flush under the IGBTs, otherwise it you'll see a big spark and uh, nothing's going to work anymore. Alright, we'll come back when it's back together. Okay, we got it back together. Um, it was relatively easy, it was just a bit of a challenge to align all the uh, screws for the IGBTs. Yeah, it certainly needs a case because you you would be able to touch high voltage here, and also I think that electrolytic is a bit close to the to the heatsink. So if that vibrates, it may rub on that, and you you you're gonna have a short circuit somewhere. But overall, here is the same. The clearance here is very little, if there is any. So it may rub and that will give you a short circuit at some point. The threads are done really badly here. But anyway, this is a cheap thing. Nothing rattling inside. Okay. For a $150 inverter, um, I would say the quality, the build quality is acceptable. What I don't believe is the rating, because I think it's more like a 2.5 kilowatt, because a motor never has a power factor of 1. 
even with a power factor of one we would be just shy of three kilowatts so uh, there is some overcurrent allowed but anyway it's got an rs485 port i believe it's rs232 or or rs485 i'm not sure i didn't go that far into the manual uh, there is a jumper here we need to figure out what that is needs a few links to run so we're gonna wire that up and uh, fire it up probably in the next episode that was just a quickie to have a look inside how it looks like uh, I'm gonna wire that thing up tomorrow so and uh, have a closer look well yeah comes with some instruction booklet lots of information in there um, it says Hong Kong Y and F Group Limited Young Young Electrical Co Ltd apparently made in Hong Kong or at least sold in Hong Kong I don't know conclusion I would say I was expecting a lot less for the money I would say it's fairly well designed uh, assembly is a bit loveless but what do you expect for the money honestly if you look at the bits they want the money alone so it's okay there's nothing you can complain about apart from the bend look here but uh, we're gonna sort that out obviously all the terminal writings here are in Chinese um, it's got provision for brake resistor which is unusual in the cheap inverter fraction what it doesn't have is access to the DC voltage but you can easily get there I would not run that thing without finger protection because if you stick your fingers in here you might get an electrical shock uh, it just doesn't make me feel good to run that without a case no you shouldn't do that um what i also suggest with those things is it definitely needs a mains filter because there's very little filtering inside well essentially nothing um so this will jam your radio eventually <laughs> and your mobile phone and whatever um yeah it needs some serious emc precaution usually just put a, a a decent mains filter in front of it and and uh, that should sort it out all right that's it from this episode um we'll power that up in the next uh, episode i just want to make a quick video um because i wanted to take it apart before i actually fire it up just in case it blows up and also have a an idea how safe it is and uh, they do different versions uh, they sell another one which is 2.2 kilowatts or so um, they all look the same who knows all right i'm gonna get that wired up for the next episode and uh, we will uh, go through the parameters and see what we can actually set on that thing i got a little motor somewhere around here so we can spin it around and uh, have a closer look eventually if I have a chance to connect via this uh, serial connection, I might be able to even look at it with a computer because the manual says it's all Modbus. So, that's it. 220 volt, 3 kilowatts, which is a bit of a lie. Anyway, thanks for watching and. Uh, Till part two of that.